In this example, we have an electron shot between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor. My upper plate is charged positively. My lower plate is charged negatively. And that means the electric field points downward in between these two plates. Now, there's a force exerted on the electron opposite the direction of the electric field. And the magnitude of that force is given by the magnitude of the charge times the magnitude of the field. So this is what causes a vertical deflection of the electron as it passes between the plates, that vertical electric force on the electron. And it's key in this problem to realize that what we're doing is totally equivalent to projectile motion, which we studied in physics one. And the reason why is that I only have a force operating vertically. There is no force operating horizontally. And that means the velocity is going to be constant in the horizontal direction. I could also say the acceleration in the X direction is zero. I could also say the initial x velocity is equal to the final. I don't know if I'll use that, but I wanted to be thorough. And then in the y direction, we have an acceleration caused by that vertical force, which is an electric force. Newton's second law says the acceleration is f over m. And I know the force here is just qe. That's the electric force if I know the charge and the electric field magnitude. So I know my acceleration is upward. So what I'm doing here is just working with magnitudes. I don't care that the charge has a minus sign on it. I know which way this force points. So I'm just going to put in magnitudes. The charge on an electron is equal to the elementary charge, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The strength of my electric field is 1,000 newtons per coulomb. So I can see I'm getting newtons out of that numerator. That's good. And then the mass of an electron you might have to look up is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And so I end up with an acceleration of 1.76 times 10 to the 14 meters per second squared for this electron. All right, so there's the acceleration that causes the vertical deflection of the electron as it travels through these plates. And we're asked to find the size of the deflection if the horizontal travel distance is 10 centimeters. So this is very much like the old projectile motion problems from physics one. If we know the horizontal change during the problem, we can very quickly use that to find the flight time. And then we can go back and use that flight time to find the size of the vertical deflection. So we'll start with the X analysis, just because that's the direction I have extra information about. I know the final position in the X direction. So I'm going to write down my first kinematics equation for the motion in the X direction x equals x naught plus v naught x t plus one half ax t squared just to be extra thorough and now i remember of course that the acceleration in the x direction is zero because there are no forces pointing in that direction i don't lose anything by calling my initial position zero so x naught is going to be zero and really what i'm looking at is distance equals rate times time and i'm trying to find time that's going to be my final x position divided by my x velocity. And so I get 10 centimeters or 0.1 meters divided by 10 to the seventh meters per second. And this is something I forgot to mention earlier. 10 to the seventh is rather large. And so you might think you have to start worrying about special relativity. This is about 3% the speed of light. So yeah, special relativity would offer a slight correction to this problem but we're getting a decent approximation by just pretending that it's classical. So I end up with a travel time of 10 to the negative eight seconds. Okay, now let's look at the Y analysis. My initial Y velocity is zero, and then I start to pick up a positive Y velocity as that vertical force, that upward pointing force starts to add more and more speed in that direction. And I'm gonna cover some amount of vertical distance delta Y before I get to the end of this horizontal 10 centimeters. So if I write down my first kinematics equation for the y direction, I could either call the initial y position zero, or I just want to illustrate in this case that I could subtract the y naught from both sides, and then y minus y naught is delta y. My initial y velocity is zero, so that's gone. And so I'm going to go ahead and call that left-hand side delta y. That's what I'm trying to solve for. And it's going to be one half times the magnitude of that acceleration, which was 1.76 times 10 to the 14 meters per second squared times the time squared, so 10 to the negative eight seconds, all squared. When I run the numbers on this, I get delta Y equals 0 
eight meters. I could also say that's 8.8 .8 millimeters. So we're going to see examples repeatedly of how to deflect electron beams in this course and taking two plates that are charged oppositely and using the electric field to steer the electron beam. That's one way to get it done. The other way is with a magnetic field, and we'll see that later on. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, click on the Zach's lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.